Thank you. I got the thumbs up from David. I welcome those that are joining us online tonight as we continue the study in the Jesus' Olivet Discourse. Uh, two weeks ago, we uh, was in Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, looking at the parables of the virgins. And, and, uh, and tonight's lesson is the parable of talents. Now, I'm going to read the whole thing, but just to start it off so we're in the right mindset here. Verse 14 says, for it is just like a man about to go on a journey. Now, if you've got the King James or the New King James, uh, it, it will have, uh, it will have for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country. Uh, the part where it says the kingdom of heaven is like is actually added in by the uh, translators. It's not in the original language. And, uh, and so it, Jesus is continuing on talking about what the kingdom of heaven is like. But in the original language, uh, it, it's a continuation from verse 13. If we go back to verse 13, talking about uh, uh, the parable of the virgins, it says, Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour, comma, for it's just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. So it's a continuation. And when we look at the uh, parable of the virgins and we looked at those parables that came before, these parables were all about you don't know when Jesus is coming. He's going to come sooner. He's going to come later. And he's going to come when, when he's least expected. And, and as we go into, uh, uh, into this parable, it's, it's not about the timing of Jesus' coming, but it talks about our faithfulness until he does come. It's talking about our faithfulness. And, and, and when we look at verses 1 through 13, the stress there, uh, two weeks ago when we looked at that, is stressed about our inward, our spiritual readiness. Are we ready spiritually, individually, for Jesus to come? Now, as we look at verses 14 through 30, it stresses our outward, our, our outward exertion, our outward expression, our work that we do for Jesus until he comes. Actually, if you, uh, if, if you want to glance at it, you can go over to Luke 19, Luke 19, uh, verses 11 through 27 is oftentimes called the parable of the pounds or parable on money usage. Uh, it's, it's a very similar parable, but it's not the same. But, but there's a lot of parallels between that, uh, uh, uh that parable and this one. Uh, the circumstances were completely different. When Jesus gave that parable, the parable of the, of the pounds, uh, it was right outside of Jericho that he was given that. It was right after, uh, the conversion of Zacchaeus. You remember the story of Zacchaeus, you know. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man it was he, climbed above the sycamore tree. Lord, he wanted to see. You know, you know the story. But, but people were expecting for the kingdom to come. And in, uh, Luke 19, verse 11, it says, while they were listening to these things, Jesus went on to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem and they supposed that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. So he said, a nobleman went into a, de- a distant country to receive a kingdom for himself and then return. And he called his slaves and gave them uh, gave him his stuff to do. Uh, there, there are a number of differences between that parable and this one, but there are obviously things that are the same. And the thing I want to emphasize uh, is verse 13, uh, Luke 19, verse 13, and this applies to this parable that we're looking at tonight. It says, Then he called ten of his slaves and gave them ten minas and said to them, do business with this until I come back. And the emphasis here, what are we to do until Jesus returns? We're to be busy about his business. And in fact, when Jesus returns, he ought to find us busy doing what he has called us to do. 
And this is what this parable is centering on. So as we look at this, let me read through the whole parable. And I'll probably make some comments along the way. But I want us to get the big picture because I'm wanting to address the big picture of this parable. Verse 14. For it's just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. And he went on a journey. Immediately, catch that word immediately, immediately, the one who had received five talents went and traded with them and gained five more talents. And in the same manner, the one who had received two talents gained two more. But he who received the one talent went away, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Verse 19. You understand, we're living in the error just prior to verse 19. That's where we're at in the parable here. Verse 19. Now, after a long time, the master of the slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Verse 22. And the one who received two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have gained two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had received the one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid and went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave. You knew that I reap where I did not sow and gathered where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank. And on my arrival, I would have received back my money with interest. Therefore, take away the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more shall be given. And he will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have, shall be taken away. Throw out the worthless slave into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know, when we look at this in the big picture here, we we, we need to understand, you know, what are we to do till Jesus comes? It's interesting, uh, one of my commentators compared it to Nehemiah. You remember the story of Nehemiah uh, when they were rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, You know, they had enemies without, uh, without and within, but they were surrounded. And so they worked on the wall with one hand on the sword and the other hand building the... Uh, building the walls, uh, Nehemiah 4.18. As for the builders, each wore his sword girded at his side as he built while the trumpeter stood near me. They were ready. We are to work while we watch. Hang on, I'm working on getting the static out. Okay, there we go. Uh, we're, we're to work while we watch. We are to work while we watch and 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 you know we are uh, what it said in Luke 19:13 we are to do business until he comes till he comes back and and uh and here what does the guy do the the master here he gives uh he gives one five talents a talent by the way uh was worth it was actually a weight of measure usually dealing with silver but a talent of silver, a talent, was worth about 20 years' wages of the average laborer. 
20 years wages. So when we're, we're talking about a fair sum of money here. And so uh, understand, uh, though we're talking money, it symbolizes a lot more. And I like the word talents. Understand, we've all been given certain talents. Now, we, we, we get spiritual, we'll call them gifts of the Spirit. But, you know, we also, some of us have some natural talents, Okay, understand a natural talent is still a gift from the Lord, whether it's a natural or we're given a spiritual. Spiritual gift is a gift that uh, is an ability that we didn't previously have. Okay, and 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 all of us who have a the, the Holy Spirit within us, we all have a gift. And actually, the way I as I understand it in the study of gifts is we 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 have a gift, but the gifts have many components. Okay, uh, some have administration, some have evangelism, some have gift of healing and and the gift of helps and so on and so forth. And it's all in varying amounts. Some of us have more in service. And others have more in other things, okay? And, and so we have different gifts that are given to us by the Spirit. We also have some natural talents. And it talks about that t- various talents, whether it's five or two or one, was given out according to the abilities. Now, one thing that we have to, you know, we, we want to say, oh, I've got all of these talents, I've got all of these gifts, and we need to understand to whom much is given, much is required. Okay, and and so understand the guy with the one talent, he was expected to do one talent's worth of work. Okay, not as much as the others, but you see, when 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 the master came back and handed out rewards, and we go back and we we look at these verses, and and it said uh, verse twenty one and verse uh, twenty three are word for word identical. To the one who had five talents and the one who had two talents, they both doubled what they had. They they used what they had, and the masters had the good things to say to them. And understand, there were three rewards associated with that. He says, well done, my good and faithful servant. They got praise. To get praise from the Lord, for the Lord to praise us, is there any higher praise that we could get than the Lord praising us? He says, well done. And, and, and he goes on to say, uh, you were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Uh, the second reward that we get is more responsibility, more work, but bigger work, if you will. Bigger, better, however you want to say that, more responsibility. So we get praise. We are rewarded with more responsibility. And the last thing we get, he says, Enter into the joy of your master. Enter into the joy of your master. And, and you know, I got to think that's got to be the best gift of all. To know that I brought joy to the Lord. And I enter into his joy. And look at those three rewards. Those three rewards. And uh, notice the rewards were the same for the guy with the five talents with the guy with the two talents. And so it's not about, it's not about uh, uh, what gifts that we were given. It's what we do with what we had been given. If the guy with the one talent had produced another talent, he would have gotten the same reward. He would have gotten the same. And so it's all about our faithfulness. Do you catch that? What God has given us. And in fact, I, I drew your attention to it. Verse 16 says, when he, when he went on his journey, it said, verse 16, immediately, straightway, another translation will have it. Immediately. You know, these are guys who received the Lord. The Lord gave them their spirit, gave them their gifts, and they went to work. Uh, uh-uh, not when it was convenient. They went to work immediately. And they worked until he came back. Okay, and that's what we are called to do. That is, we are called to be faithful. We are called to be faithful. Uh, uh, when we when we look at, especially, you go back to uh, Luke nineteen and the parable of uh, of uh, pounds. There, um, in fact, there it's a little bit different. Every slave was given the same responsibility. 
but what did they do with it? It's all about faithfulness again. Uh, the differences, they had different gifts. They had different, uh, uh, we had different uh, results. But, and, but, it's, but understand, the praise for the Lord is the same. It's are we responsible for what we had? Now, now uh, the parable in the pounds, it dealt with some other things, with the Lord going away, coming back, receiving a kingdom. And if you read through that, it's about putting to death the guys who are against them. Uh, that had a lot to do with, uh, with non-believers and so on and so forth. Uh, so there are different emphases in that, but these two parables are very closely related. And so uh, 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 if you read one, you need to read the other, but you got to put it, the whole thing in the context to understand it. Now, half of this parable deals with a guy who only had one talent. One talent. And understand... Uh, all he had to show for his life when his master came back was a hole in the ground. <laughs> had nothing to show for it. He, uh, uh, and, and what did it say over here, uh, in verse 28? He says, therefore, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For everyone who has more, more shall be given, and he who has an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have will be taken away. You know, the Lord gives us talents and everything, and it's a use it or lose it type of thing. We are to use what the Lord has given us. He does, he gives us gifts for a reason. He gives us gifts, uh, to build up the body of Christ. He gives us gifts to serve Him. But there's more here than what we have to understand. And what does it say in verse 30? Uh, what was the reward of this third slave with the one talent who buried it? And understand, burying, uh, valuables in the ground, that was an accepted way in ancient times of preserving uh, a, a certain valuable item so no one can steal it. Because if you dig a hole, no one knows where it is except for you. Uh, there were, uh, there were folks, folks who said, well, he could have put it in the bank. But if he put it in the bank, it would have had his master's name on it. And so it came back. But he put it in a hole in the ground. If his master never came back, who were to know who that belonged to? And he could go away with it. You know, it wasn't about the gift that he was given. It was about who that gift belonged to. And understand, we are... Boy, I'm going to have to get this wire fixed, but I'll get it fixed here. At any rate, it's, it's, it's about what we've been entrusted with. Now, what is the reward of the one who only had the one talent? And it says in verse 30... Throw out that worthless slave into outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping and gnashing of teeth and outer darkness in the book of Matthew usually just described one thing. And that talks about the place of torment and a place of hell. Now, was this slave a believer? Uh, we're looking here. Actually, I think it's a wannabe believer. We have people who profess a faith, but they don't live a faith. And there's numerous passages, and we've talked about that, who say one thing, but their life doesn't look any different. There's no faith. There was no uh, wanting the risk that... Understand, there's risk in going out and using the talents that God has given us. You know, we're not responsible for results. We're responsible to do. Okay, God is responsible for the results, but we're responsible for the work. This guy takes no risk. There is no evidence of his ever been saved. Okay, this is, uh, he doesn't work. There's no fruit. You know, the Bible talks a lot about fruit. Now, we are saved by faith. Don't make any mistake about that. We are saved by faith, not because of anything that we have done. Bible is very clear about that. 
But if we have the Holy Spirit living within us, we have a power that the rest of the world doesn't possess, there will certainly be fruit to that effect. If we're not producing any fruit, there are real reason why we should suspect that we don't have salvation, you know? Uh, Paul tells us to examine yourself to see whether or not you're, you are in fact in the spirit, that you are in fact in the faith. If we have faith, we will produce. We're not producing fruit in order to be saved. We produce fruit because we are saved, okay? It's the hort before the cart kind of thing, okay? And so this guy who buried it never had any faith, and what he was doing. He had nothing to show for his life, and and he was punished accordingly. I think there's going to be a lot of people in hell one day that are surprised that they're there. Okay, we've been to church, we filled the squares, but life was no different. There was no, there was never any fruit. You know, there are people who put on a good show. And, and, and we have to, and this is a hard message to preach because there are people sitting in our pews that may not be saved. And it scares me to death. But I'm charged with preaching the gospel and, 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 and telling the facts the way it is coming from the, the word of God. You know, I, I, Bob preached on this Sunday, just three dollars, please. I only want a little bit of Jesus, okay? That one, I, we put it, uh, what is that at Christmas time? You got the shelf elf or whatever it is. Well, we got Jesus on, elf on the shelf. Well, we got Jesus on the shelf. And we got them there to look pretty and we, we pull them down when we need them. Then we put them back when we no longer need them. I tell you what, I need Jesus every day. I need Jesus to go get gas and to go to Walmart. I, we need get Jesus for everything. And, and he is in and through everything that we do, not someone I put up on the shelf. Uh, uh, there's reason to question people who have a Jesus on the shelf kind of faith. And this is what this guy is. Yes, ma'am. We have people going through life that way, thinking they're in the dark, but they don't see the darkness, you know, because their eyes are darkness. It talks about that the God of the God of this age, which is the devil, has blinded them. You don't see because you can't see. But, you know, if we see and we see what needs to be done, you know, I also believe that there are Christians out there, truly saved Christians that aren't producing as much as they should. And, and the thing that we got to realize, and I'm not prepared to preach on this tonight, but we got the judgment seat of Christ. Understand, when we go, go to be with Christ, there is his judgment, and it's a judgment of rewards. And I do believe in the millennium, and there'll be those uh, uh, with regret. They'll be in heaven, they'll be with Jesus, they'll be... Their eternal souls are saved, but they will be without rewards. Oh, what I could have done. What I could have had opportunity for. And, and I think one of the most precious things that I will ever hear in my entire existence, not life, but existence, 
is to, is to hear one day Jesus said, well done, my good and faithful servant. I, I, I just, I, 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 I look forward to that. And, and the work for the Lord is not working for the world. We have been given certain things, and God, you know, God didn't call everybody to be Billy Graham. But if he gave you one talent, you are to use that one talent. You are to use the abilities and the opportunities that God has given. And, and it scares me, you know, being a pastor scares me. Because, you know, God has called me to this position, and that's a huge responsibility, spiritually speaking. And, and am I living up to it? Because I don't answer to you, I answer to God. And, and will I be able to stand in front of him and, and to hear him say that? And so I have to speak the truth of the scriptures and, and wherever that leads. There, there, I've told you all times that once I decide on a, on, on a passage, and, and usually I'll, I'll get a topic, but I decide on a passage, I'll preach wherever that, pastor, where that passage takes me even if it takes me away from that topic that I had chosen, okay? Because I got to go where the scriptures lead, and 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 this is this is a tough passage here. Uh, there's another passage, uh, and I preached on this before when we went through the Sermon on the Mount over in chapter seven of Matthew. Uh, Jesus says, on, "On come that day, there are many who will say, Lord, Lord, did we not do this, that, and the other?'" And 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 Jesus will say, "I never knew you." That's tough. There are a lot of people who choose to do good things in their eyes, but it's not good in God's eyes. You know, oftentimes, I, I believe many of us know the things that we need to do. It's very clear, and we don't want to do them. It's not about whether we want to do them or not. It's whether or not we know that God has called us to do it, but we choose to do other good things instead. No, we need to do what God has called us to do. And be, we have to be responsible with what God has entrusted us with. And in the place where God has placed you. And so this is, this is very important. And this is, understand, this is what we are to do till he comes. We're like Nehemiah building the wall. Got one hand on the sword, I'm watching. But the other hand is working. And we are, need to be working. We don't need to go sit on a hilltop and put on a white robe and wait for Jesus to come like some groups have notably done in the past. I pray when Jesus comes, he will find me busy about his work. His work. And that's, that's where we need to be. Yes, sir. I want to share this about Go ahead. Two people get married, a man and a woman get married. Out of their intimacy, children are born into the family. It's out of our intimacy with Jesus that godly children are born into the family. Yep. That's that's right. And understand, we cannot do any good thing, good in the eyes of God, okay, unless God does it through us. And, and understand, we are tools in his hands. Are we willing tools, uh, pliable tools, usable tools? You know, I got some tools in my, um, in, in my tool bucket that I haven't used in a while, and they don't work too well because they're rusted. Are we rusted or are we well-oiled and able to work? That's right. Uh, all right. This Sunday... Uh, we're having the Lord's Supper. We're going to be preaching about uh, sharing and serving within the family. You know, uh, understand one of our responsibilities is to the family of God. You know, we talked about that. You know, we help one another. We do things for one another. And, and if we can't get help from the family of God, who can we get help from? And that's one of our areas of service. Uh, we talk about serving our community, and that's important. But we are also here to serve and build up one another. Amen. Be safe in the storm. Uh, Y'all got my number. Give me a call if there's anything I can do for you or if you need help in the storm. And let me go ahead and close this in a word of prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, realizing all that we have, all that we are, are all that we're able to do comes from you. And Lord, that we, all the good that we do do, Lord, may we do it in your power. We ask that you watch over us, that you guide us, you direct us, and that everything that we say and do, that we might bring honor and glory to Jesus. Be with us, and especially those in the path of the storm tonight, and Lord, and tomorrow, and Lord, that through it all, Jesus, Jesus, be glorified. For it's in his holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Y'all have a great rest of the week. Thank you.